I'd be invited because I haven't been to Scotland until now. So looking forward to the week. And I jumped at the opportunity to present now so I'd have more time to relax at the conference. Um, so this is going to be a, a different guise of reflection groups than, than what we've seen so far, but um, not totally disconnected. Um, this joint work with, with Martha Precup. Um, um, so my setup, um, will, instead of the reflection group, which will be a vile group throughout this talk, it'll I'll be working with the algebraic group uh, over the complex numbers and I'll fix a maximal torus inside of a Borel. And uh, I'll take the vial group W um, if we need roots, um, there they are, um, and the corresponding Lie algebras. So the object, the kind of combinatorial, this would be, I was placed after um, from the more combinatorial people originally um, have a set of a finite set of objects that, that play a role throughout the talk. And these are the subspaces of the nil radical, which is the upper triangular matrices in GLN um, that are stable under the action of the Borel. So um, they can be called ad nil potent ideals or, or B stable subspaces or B stable ideals because they're, they're ideals in the, in the Lie algebra of the Borel. So if you're, if you're in type A2, GL3 or SL3, um, there's only five of these, the, the upper triangular matrices are, are there, um, strictly upper triangular zeros of the diagonal. And then there's just these four other, including, including zero. So there's only five of these objects. So it might look familiar um, to you if you know what a, a, a dick path is. Um, so in type A, these are just parametrized and connected with dick paths, um, I think. The way I set it up, it will be if you're in type A n rank n, then the dick paths have size two n plus two. So here I am for n equals four. Um, so rank four G L five. Here's an example. So you're always going uh, what is it east and south. You can touch the diagonal, um, but you can't go below the diagonal. Um, and if if every time you go, I think I wrote it here. Every if every time you go south and then east, you hit a diagonal, then you, you'll recognize that um, as the nil radical of a parabolic subgroup. That's kind of a special case of one of these halves or one of these subalgebras. So you have the full nil radical for the whole group, and then you can have the ones that touch the diagonal in type A, and it would generalize to other, other types. So the number of, the number of dick paths, uh, now I've switched my notation to n uh, is the Catalan number is a is a Catalan number given by that formula. And if you're working in general type, it has a a version that uses all actually some of the information that we've already seen in previous talks. So the basic the degrees of the basic invariants uh, or fundamental degrees, the rank and the Coxeter number, which is the largest fundamental degree go into that formula and it was proved by Cellini and Pappy um, that, um, that the, the, the size of this set is given by that formula. That's called a W Catalan number. And just as an example, in E8, there's about 25,000 of these objects. So I rearranged my talk a little bit, got some empty space. Um, so on the one hand, we have these objects. You can also, uh, under the killing form, take their orthogonal complement. Um, this is what most people who work with Hessenberg varieties uh, will use. Um, so all you're doing is you're taking the stuff that has inner product zero so that you have to leave out the stuff kind of that you are already using. So you get your five Hessenberg spaces and then zero turns into the holy algebra and the nil radical just gets slightly bigger. It picks up the diagonal you get the Borel subalgebra, the standard Borel subalgebra. Now from these two objects, from one of these either ideals or one of these Hessenberg spaces, you can build an analog of the, um, of the cotangent bundle to the flag variety. So you pick one of these spaces, instead of have what you would normally have would be the nil radical here, 
just give you the definition of this general construction you would have and you project on the first factor, you get a, a vector bundle over the flag variety. And then it comes with the analog, what would be the analog of the moment map, which is a projection onto the second factor where you multiply or you use the adjoint action of G. And this is a proper map, it's G equivariant. And I'll use, and since, since I'm only using upper triangular matrices, uh, for GLN and, and in general type, um, they're always nilpotent uh, elements. So you'll end up in what's called the nilpotent cone. Now you won't be surjective unless you're the nil radical. You won't hit everything. Anyhow, we can form for any of these like 25,000 things in E8, we can form such a vector bundle and try to study its, its analog with the nil radical case. Okay. So um, if you're not the nil radical, then you're still going to be uh, end up with something irreducible and it'll, therefore it will be, and it will be closed. So it will actually be the closure of a single nilpotent orbit. There's finitely many nilpotent orbits in type A, they just correspond to partitions. Um, but in general, you'll hit a nilpotent orbit. And now to the two special cases, um, the nil radical, this would be called the Springer resolution related to the moment map of, for the uh, cotangent bundle. And in one of these parabolic cases, um, I've switched it up slightly. You can also grab a, a bigger parabolic group if you want, um, just to emphasize that this was the case that was studied by Borho and McPherson. Um, and these maps are special um, for reasons that will see in a, in a moment, these are semi-small maps, which has to do with how the sizes of the fibers grow over the different orbits. So the other cases won't have this property, which is why it's, it's really interesting. Okay, so we can, we can study the fibers for, for either the original ideals I or these dual spaces H. Um, these vector bundles, these are smooth. Um, and um, in these two cases, and there's also this one case actually from, I'm mentioning this because it comes from the Borho McPherson paper. They actually then do like a third game where they intersect the big space with the, with the nilpotent cone and, and do a projection. So there's really kind of like three games you can play with, but this third game, it's not smooth in general. They prove it's rationally smooth in the parabolic case so it kind of fits in but it's not really so important it's really these two here and so we're interested in the fibers of these maps so you're projecting and you're asking for the fiber so in the first case i was talking about you're always landing in the nilpotent elements so you're only talking about you're only interested in what would happen over a nilpotent element so you pick a nilpotent element and you just ask for the fiber of that map and maybe we'll use this notation for Hessenberg, Hessenberg E comma I. Now for the H case, you will actually, because you contain the diagonal matrices always, you'll always um, end up being surjective onto the Lie algebra in this case. So you can grab any element that you want, but the two interesting ones for this talk are to again grab a nilpotent element and study the fiber in that case. And then the last one that will be of interest is to take a regular semi-simple element and grab that fiber. Again, over the this sort of H case. So there's really three classes of fibers that we're interested in. And this sort of story with Hessenberg varieties got started um, in a paper by um, Demarie Purchase and um, Shaman. And they proved that in the in this regular semi-simple case, you actually get a smooth variety, and it's Euler, and it actually has a cell decomposition, one cell for each element of the Vaughan group, which tells you there's no odd cohomology, and the Euler characteristic is the order of the is the size of the Vaughan group. So that that's for that this regular semi-simple case. And then Tomasco used um, some techniques, some com kind of combinatorial techniques to actually construct a representation of the vial group on these regular, what are called regular semi-simple Hessenberg varieties. 
So it's, it's really interesting. So you have each one of these things for each of these 25,000 things in E8, you're going to get a representation of W. They all have the same size. They're all the, the order of the Vaal group. And here are the two extremes of what you get. You can get, um, if you take your Hessenberg space to be the Borel, then what you're really asking for is how many Borels contain a regular semi-simple. That's, that's a classical result that there's one for each element of the Vaal group. And, and so that's a dimension zero thing. Um, yeah, so these, these things don't have to be irreducible. They can have components. Um, and then W is just permuting around those W points in degree zero. So you get the regular representation concentrated in degree zero. At the other extreme, well, if you have all of G, you're just gonna get uh, the full flag variety. So it has the cohomology of the flag variety, but now this W action is funny. It's not the covariant. Um, it's just acting trivially. So you just get W copies of the trivial representation. Those are the two extremes. In between, we don't really know um, what's going on, um, but part of this talk is a contribution to computing what's going on in between if you wanted to do the E8 case, for example, which most people don't. Most people are interested in the type A case. <laughs> so I know Martha and I are two of the people who are interested uh, beyond that case. <laughs> So in type A, there's another piece of the story. You know, if we had more time, I mean, can I go to six tonight or something? <laughs> if we had more time, this, this is, this, these are talks in and of themselves. Many, I've seen many beautiful talks on this. There's a combinatorial side to it in type A, which has to do with, uh, you can build a graph from any of these ideals. You can build a graph from the roots, roots that are not chosen. And, and then you can um, connect them um, yeah, you can use the roots that are not chosen to connect endpoints, uh, depending on which N I was using. Um, and then you can look at all the colorings of this graph and build a polynomial. And Shereshian and Walks took a definition of Stanley and, and figured out how to grade it. And then maybe up to tensoring with sign, it turns out, first proven by Brosnan and Chow, that um, it's the same representation that you get. So, so for, in other words, for each H, there's a very simple way to write down a graph and these, these two things turn out to be the same. So that's really interesting um, connection. In that world, there's a conjecture that many people are thinking about. I'll just mention it because I just think it's really interesting. Um, so whichever side you want to work on, um, the conjecture of um, Stanley and Stembridge as adapted by Shereshian and Walk says, that in each cohomological degree, the representation is actually a permutation representation. Induced, you know, there's inducing the trivial representation from a young subgroup, from different young subgroups. So which young subgroups, you have to just, to prove this, you have to decide which young subgroups occur and in which degree. Um, oh, right, so I had this, so I had the example here. For, um, for this Hessenberg space, where you just leave out the, the lowest root. Um, so again, it's dimension six, and this is what it looks, just to give you a flavor of what it looks like, it's four copies of the trivial and one reflection. Um, and it does have to be, there is a symmetry. Um, when we know it's smooth, so at least Poincaré polynomial, but even more than that, the representations um, have to be symmetric about the, the middle. Um, and so is this a permutation? Yes, because you have three trivials and then trivial plus reflection is induced from S2. Okay, so I proved the Stanley Stanbridge conjecture in one special game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the thing that I, I wanna talk about, we don't need, to, don't need to overwhelm people too much, but, but the idea is that um, there's a geometric mechanism. So we have, the, the work that Tomasco did and, and Brosnan and Chow, um, and we can play a geometric game where we push forward the constant sheaf on one of these vector bundles. So if we shift it by, uh, depending on your normalization, the dimension, then that's, uh, and, since, and since the variety is smooth, that's a per, considered a perverse sheaf. There's a big theorem that says when you push that forward, um, our map is proper, geocovariant, um, it's going to be able to be written in terms of simple perverse sheaves, which are, which are these gadgets, um, which are intersection cohomology. 
Um, and you get one of these for each nilpotent orbit. And then the nilpotent orbit can have a fundamental group. And so each irreducible representation of a fundamental group gives you a local system. And so you have finitely many of these things parametrized by the nilpotent orbits and their uh, and the representations of their fundamental groups, the irreducible representation. So we don't need to, to, we don't have to sum over those things. And then what's going to happen is um, these things can occur multiple times and in multiple and different degrees. So we'll just record that as a graded vector space. So it depends on which of these 25,000 ideals you're taking. And it depends on this parametrizing set, this finite parametrizing set, which is almost the size of the vial group, but it's bigger. <laughs> so that's not the right thing. So it's it's at least the size of the vial group. Not, not the vial group, the, the um, number of irreducible representations of the vial group. So in type A, there's no local systems that are relevant. Um, and you would just get the number of partitions of N. That's, that's roughly what's going on here. So anyhow, so we can encode from I, we can encode, and for each of these parametrizing things, we get basically a polynomial. We only care about the basically the Poincaré polynomial of this graded vector space. What, how, what occur, how much occurs, what's the dimension in each, in each degree? So two questions come up. Which of these local systems and orbits actually occur on the right-hand side? And then given the ones that occur, how do you actually compute these, these polynomials or the, these graded vector spaces? I don't wanna to take two. Too long. So there's there's two special cases that we've been talking about the the, the parabolic case and this. So in the Springer the Springer case is particularly important. So not all local systems occur. That's what's called this. This is part of the package of the Springer correspondence. Not all local systems occur, and the pairs that do occur correspond to an irreducible representation of W. So if you hand me an irreducible representation of W for any vial group, then I can I can show you the pair. Um, but not all pairs occur. Okay, so we can go back and forth between the pairs that occur. We can talk about the pair or the irreducible representation. And now in these two special cases, um, everything is concentrated in degree zero. Um, it, if I modify this by that the thing that I modified it before. Um, and so in the Springer case, you're only going to get each you're going to get each um, IC sheaf and it's going to be concentrated in degree zero and it's just going to occur a number of times equal to the dimension of that vial group representation. More generally in the parabolic case, um, what's going to happen is it's concentrated in degree zero, but the dimension is going to be a multiplicity in some induced representation. So you induce from the vial group of the parabolic, you take the sign character there. And now I'm going back and forth between this, pa this parametrizing set O, L, and um, the corresponding irreducible. So that's, those are the special cases. And again, in this, when I talked about this, I adjusted by the P so I could get a semi-small map, which is what allows me to say that it's concentrated in degree zero. So you can do the same thing for H. I just did it for I, did it for H. So this, this instead of being the analog of the Springer resolution, it's what's called the analog of the Groton Dieck Springer resolution. And you also have a decomposition. And what wasn't known is whether there were lower terms. So here you could actually in principle get some other terms. I won't, let me, in the interest of time, skip what this says. Just there's another set of IC sheaves. They're supported on the Holy algebra. Each one corresponds to an irreducible representation, but there could be smaller pieces. Get another graded vector space. Rosnan had conjectured that there's no lower terms. And so that's what we prove with Martha, um, that the only local systems that appear in the first thing that I showed you are those that already appear in the Springer correspondence, which was the nil radical case. So you can't get any of these other local systems. And for that reason, you can't get any lower terms. There's a notion of Fourier transform. And then for free, what we basically get is that the vector spaces that show up are the same, just you have to tensor with sign to make it work out. And this was actually proved already 
by Balabanu and Crooks in type A. So in order to prove this um, and to do any of these computations, um, we have to understand the cohomology of these, Hessen, these fibers, these Hessenberg varieties. Um, and um, so maybe in the interest of time, the main result, it generalizes work of G. Concini, Lustig, and Prochese. There's a set of vial group elements so that you can break apart these fibers um, into smooth things, they're, they're, and they will be vector bundles over a smooth projective. And then we, we analyze these, what happens, and that's, that's basically, um, should, I, should I take 45? Should I take, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so, so maybe just, just really quickly, um, what's going on is that uh, every nilpotent element, should have said nilpotent, Every nilpotent element embeds in an SL2. That's the Jacobson Marazzo theorem. So you take the standard basis of SL2 um, and it sits inside of your Lie algebra. The semi simple part, the diagonal part, gives you a grading of your Lie algebra. So, for example, in, in SL3, um, if you take a rank one nilpotent matrix, um, then you get. Um, that your H put into standard form just looks like one, zero, negative one. So sits and sit, sits inside of an SL2 and you can decompose your Lie algebra under the SL2. You, you know that these are all integer um, eigenspaces. And then the reduction is you can bring everything down into this G greater than or equal to two space. So I, I take all the eigenspaces for this SL2 uh, of eigenvalue greater than or equal to two and I can reduce, I can, I can compute these smooth projective things just by looking at the smaller case, which consists of the ideals that live in here. Okay, and then um, if I consider this set and I make a definition for the, so basically if we find the Vaughan group elements that can occur, then the result is, that you can decompose in degree two, two i. There's, so there's no odd cohomology, and in two i you can write everything over the vial group together with these smaller cases. So the upshot is that these more general Hessenberg varieties can be reduced to the cohomology of a very small set of Hessenberg varieties. There's no odd cohomology, which relies on a result from De Concini, Lustig, and Brochese. Yeah, so just to illustrate it here, we've been talking Duval singularity. So this would be the subregular element. Um, no, I'm actually not doing. I think I wrote that. Now here's my subregular element, which is different. Um, I I break it apart um, into these three vector bundles. This one is a P1, and the other two are just copies of C. And so they're, um, and they're vector bundles over a point. Oh, Pavel came. This is your third time seeing this talk. I did it. I switched so that you wouldn't have to see it a third time. Um, so anyhow, this is an illustration of, of this theorem. Um, so in E8, the most interesting case is, is this nilpotent orbit denoted uh, E8A7. The fundamental group is S5, symmetric group on five letters. Um, the total number of smooth vector bundles that occur in the decomp, I'm just doing the Springer fiber. Uh, this would just be for the case I equals, I equals um, the nil radical. Um, so it turns out the way that S5 acts on the Springer fiber, when you go to the top degree, um, you get, you look at the stabilizers of each irreducible component. Um, and and so there, and this is how many different kinds of stabilizers can occur. And so I'm grouping, I'm grouping these numbers by the kind of stabilizer that can occur. So you get 4,480 possible um, vector bundles, um, and, and they come from 501 possible Js that have grouped like this. 
And now, if you look at the number of these things, you'll always get a, a, the dimension of an irreducible because you're basically taking the S5 invariants um, there. And so you just count, you get one for each of these YW. So this is a dimension of a, an irreducible representation. I just wanted, since people were switching over, maybe just to break it for a second, I just wanted to show you that the set of vowel group elements is really small. Um, see if that'll transition quickly. The set of vowel group elements is really small that you need. So even though like the size of the vowel group of E8, what, what is, I don't even remember what its order is. 10 to the eight, 10 to the- 700 million. What is it? 700 million. 700 million, okay. So that is roughly 10, seven. Okay. <laughs> well, here's a way to compute the dimensions of all irreducible representations of any vial group without knowing anything other than the vial group as, as reflection group and this combinatorial set, 25,000 things, actually a very small number of them. So, so okay, so name, name your favorite, um, name your favorite vial group of rank eight or less. Martina, do you have a favorite one? Hmm? E6. So E6, okay. So I promise you this isn't like preloaded with the information. But, um, so it spit out here, um, you know, you, so, so it turns out that using the set of ideals, it really encodes a lot of information. So you can figure out the, um, I can't seem to highlight here. You can figure out the Dinkin diagrams. And then for each Dinkin diagram, it's gonna figure out um, the irreducible representations that come under the Springer correspondence. So this is just the Springer case. So the dimension of the Springer fiber for this one I've highlighted is four. The number of vial groups that appear in this decomposition is 135. Not all of them touch the top, kind of contribute to the top degree, which is which in this case is an irreducible representation of dimension 64. Here's another one which is maybe more interesting because there is a, a fundamental group going on. Um, so there's 30 vial groups needed. Since the diagram is even, all of them touch the top. So there's a 30 degree representation um, attached to this. And then there's another S2 is acting and it and the, the sign representation of S2 contributes another one of dimension 15. So anyhow, I think it's really cool. It's just only using a very small number of algorithms. And let's do E8 real quick. So these are irreducible. I'm not, I can't get the character table from this method, but I can get um, the irreducible representations. So here's this S5 one sitting up here and it spits out the 4480 and the other five, um, the degrees of the other five irreducible. So I think that's, that's kind of fun. Okay. Are you clapping because of that or clapping because of the, of the talk? <laughs> uh, so, but, but the point was that it uses very, very few number of vial group elements. You can't, on my laptop, I can't write down all the vial group elements of E8. So I really like that. Okay, so I don't, I don't want to keep people from their, their festivities and their dinner. <laughs> um, so let me just mention this component group action gives you a monodromy action which Brazen and Chow used to get the vial group action on these regular semi-simple spaces. And, and they prove that it coincides with Tomasco's definition. So we start mostly started the talk with this regular semi-simple smooth variety carried a W action, Brazen and Chow reinterpret it. And then they end up proving that it agrees in type A with the combinatorial picture. What I was showing you there, and I skipped the, the last piece, is that all three pieces of information coincide. So if you want to know the representation on that the cohomology of that smooth variety, Tomasco's W action, it's encoded in these graded vector spaces by pushing forward, derived push forward of the constant sheaf. So they're all the same, whether you tensor with sign or, or whatever. So knowing one, you know the others. And then you can compute these if you know um, 
the cohomology of the fibers, you can use proper base change. So that was why I was so interested in these, in the cohomology of these fibers and decomposing them. So, so that's that's one thing that can can happen. Um, so anyhow, I just show you some tables for C three, uh, for B three. Sorry. Um, so these are the Poincaré polynomials for the possible fibers. So there's 20 in this case instead of 25,000. There's 20 ideals, and then across all the nilpotent elements and their local systems, the local systems give you also um, a Poincaré polynomial. And this is this is what you get along the diagonal. Everything is smooth, so you can see that it does satisfy Poincaré duality. And then you can convert that by a change of matrix to the W representation that we're interested in. And so this, now I'm indexing it by a pair of partitions, um, which sum to three. Um, and then you get the polynomials that, that tell you the multiplicity of an irreducible. Um, so down here would be, this would be the regular representation in degree zero that we were talking about. Um, you know, there, there's another part of the story about um, something called the modular law, but I think in the interest, it's another tool that um, also appeared in the, on the combinatorial side, but I think, I think it's not really worth uh, taking your time to explain it. If someone is interested, I can explain. It gives you another way to compute. I'll just show you the, the result, the geometric module. It allows you to relate. If you have three different ideals and they satisfy a condition, then their Poincaré polynomials are related by, by this formula here. And that can be another tool to understand uh, the geometry. So I think there I will stop. Thank you. <laughs>